I think that the best way to start would be from starting with the last record. You know, there were a lot of ups and downs with this band, whether it be record labels or success or lack thereof in some cases. You know, you just get frustrated because everyone wants what's best for the band and everyone thinks they know what is best for the band. And, you know, a lot of touring and a lot of arguments. I mean, there's, there's been fist fights, there's been things thrown, there's been threats. It's just like, this is stupid. There was a point when we were touring on the last album, Chris and I hated the band so much that we were ready to leave and like just start something completely different. I couldn't stand it. It had a lot to do with the label at the time was not promoting the record. We were out there killing ourselves. I didn't get along with Kevin on the road. You know, I'm like, something has to change. Something has to be figured out. life at the, at the time. I didn't want to give it up. I just knew if we could get off Roadrunner and we could get Andal's back, I had this feeling like we could do some great things together. When Mark first brought me to the back lounge one day and he's like, Andals is leaving the band. And just right there, like, I instantly was resentful and like, what the fuck, man? You know, like, I can't believe he actually went through with it. Before, you know, towards the end, it was like every night was just like a train wreck for me. I was struggling with my playing at the time. I I guess I was always struggling with my playing, but um, it was like really, it was getting really bad. Like, I was playing shitty every night and, you know, whatever, and it was, it was making me miserable and stuff like that. So, like, I was like, uh, I guess I'm not meant to be doing this, whatever, you know, I'm gonna split. You know, just for that, for that solo spot to have this beat. And I was just thinking, man, how could you, how could you want to give, him the, give this up? Although it was a rough time in the band and stuff, you know, like dudes were starting to need money, we weren't making money and everything like that, so I kind of understood, but I, I was like, man, if you could just stick it out, you know? And towards the, towards the end, when Kevin was leaving, we were actually making money and things were looking good and, and this and that. And so all of a sudden, there's the news that Andals wants to come back. Your shoes smell so foul. Actually, I haven't used them in quite a while, but uh, after like one show, the, the funk is just unbelievable between like the, the natural stench of my feet plus like show funk. Awful. Even like a whole can of Lysol just makes it smell like, uh, I don't know, springtime breeze and feet. And you know, it's not like Kevin was a bad person. He was not messing up on stage. It's just like, and you learn this in the last, the last DVD with the whole thing with Ricky is we're very hard dudes to get in with and have this, uh, we have a camaraderie and it just, outsiders beware, basically. I and, like that. And I'll still do that tail though, diggity did because our riff does that. Love you. All right, uh, try that one on this take, I guess. All the way through from the top, okay? I think the time away has made me appreciate it a lot more. You know, I, I don't, I don't take, I don't take stuff for granted. Like I appreciate every day that I'm, that I'm doing this. Whereas before, it's kind of like whatever. Yeah, after two years away, literally, it was like, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and it's not going to school. You know, I want to be playing drums. I still like held a grudge. I was like, so he wants to take two years off a tour in Europe and this and that and all the flights and just all this, everything like that. And then just be able to waltz back in when he wants to. And like now with the new money being made, just walk into a great situation, you know?
But as soon as he got behind the kid again, as soon as we started playing, and like, I, I think the two of us, just like in, when our attack are unstoppable amongst, a, amongst the two of us, and like just other drummers, I would try to get that, and I'd work so hard to like try to get that from Ricky and Kevin, and I'd get to where I was happy with it and stuff. But then as soon as Anos came back, I found, oh, this is what I was trying to get to, as it falls into place, every note with, with his, his hands are just like perfect, you know? <laughs> Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like some devastating single strokes in the snare at the end. Normally I have to go half ass and do like a roll, but I'm like, I'm gonna do the single strokes this time. And I got him. Those two years that he was gone just sucked. I mean, it was just nothing like what it's like with him, you know? So I am glad he's back, and I am i didn't want him to leave. Me like leaving and stuff like that, and they were still willing to, you know, bring me back in the fold and stuff like that. I was. Extremely grateful. He's uh, pretty much a legend in the metal community. You know, he's um, been involved with a lot of classic albums, and he just uh, really understands sonics of everything. You know, he's generally known as a mixer more than uh, an, an engineer, but you know, obviously, he got his start uh, in engineering. You got a sweat on? A sweater? Sweat on? A sweat on? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just want to stick uh, another felt on here as well. It's just swinging around a little too much. If we've got. Uh, I saw them at uh, a download um, in the UK probably about a year and a half ago, uh, and I was absolutely blown away by them actually. You, you know, you can see a band in a small club and the lights were a bit shit, and you know the sound's not quite right. Um, but it just seemed to gel that day, um, probably because I absolutely wasted as well. But uh, <laughs> you know, um, now I'm regretting being in Cleveland. <laughs> he gets a really uh, aggressive sound. You know, and this album I feel is the most aggressive album that we've made. So I wanted someone that could bring that aggression out, and uh, he seemed to be the right guy for it. You know, even when I was, I was playing in bands back in in the late '80s as a guitar player, I was always interested in the the sort of the gear side and the you know getting good tones and you know making sure the kit sounded right. And it, it's something I've always been interested in. It's sort of putting the big picture together. So if you know if you, you if your drums are sounding good and in tune, it makes a whole mix so much easier because your everything else slots into place. You know your your bass will fit in nicely with the kick and the guitars will go in nicely. You know in the in the mid range and your overheads. You know if as long as you haven't got too much fizz on the guitars, your overheads have got their own spot as well. It's not a, not easy. I think if you can mix this sort of music, you can pretty much mix a, any sort of rock music to be honest. Yeah, we just we just did everything like it all up scratch. scratch. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's the way we recorded it at the uh, at the space too. So we're either doing it wrong or we might be doing it wrong. Jim Lamarca lives with his parents at the young age of 32. <laughs> he wears our Jimmy Camel shirts and his shoes are powder blue. Still all powder blue. Good. I'm glad that we fucking we spend money on that stuff, you know? <laughs> the fucking best melody we've ever had. I'm here getting my back adjusted and through many years of moshing and slamming around on the stage, my back has become destroyed and 
hurts to the point of I think I should start taking heroin. <laughs> so we can have this on big screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure they'll want the uh, sound effects. The sound effects will be uh, enhanced a tad. Come over toward the edge here. That's it. Bring this shoulder out and then put your hands right up here. Now just let this shoulder relax. Let this knee come right down toward the floor. That's from all the head banging. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh, God. You know, it's hard enough fucking doing this kind of stuff, being on the road touring when, you know, you don't have people that care, you know? Like, just people that are like, numbers this, numbers that. Well, fuck those people, you know? Those people don't give a shit about us personally. Fuck them, you know? I think that the last record just left such a bad taste in everybody's mouth in so many aspects. I still totally love it, the most proud of it, but it was just like, I think it could have been so much more if it had just been handled differently, you know, and it was just totally pushed under the rug right off the bat. I was so disappointed because I felt like it was such a waste. Upside down. Is that bad? Yeah, all the pedals and shit are on top of there. <laughs> Hey, yeah, we'll see. Oh, well. We went on tour and I remember talking to the label and saying, listen, we need to get off this label and I'll be damned if, you know, we're going to have a ceiling put on us. I don't think we're going to be, you know, the biggest band in the universe, but, you know, some help would be appreciated. The people that do care about us there, hey, great, you know what, thank you, you guys supported us, you tried your best. It just never worked out. We got a phone call, you know, a couple months later that uh, we were gonna uh, have our request granted to be let go from the label. And uh, we were just floored with excitement, you know? I mean, it was like this thousand pound, you know, weight got lifted off your shoulders and we were ready to like take on the world. So here's my here we're here today with my buddy Jason Sukas, and what happened is he in a world where penmanship is mandatory for those who want to achieve academic knowledge comes a story of Sandra Bernhardt and Steve Willikers, starring Mark Hunter's penis, Jiminy Cricket, Uncle Jebediah, and Oksana Bayul. <laughs> Mogwai 3. <laughs> You'd be out of control. Hey, friend is handicapped. <laughs> oh, you don't like that now? You liked it the other night. <laughs> it, it, it was played out. How you doing? Jason Sukov. That guy is not handicapped. You know what I like about Jason, though? Seriously, to tell you the truth about Jason Sukov. I love the way he fucking cooks food. He marinates stuff for like a couple days. He like marinates stuff for a couple days, you know, and then he eats it. Dude, listen. How do you fucking explain Jason? He's a fucking, I don't even know if he's a human being. <laughs> He's like one of the most loving, caring dudes ever, but at the same time, he's like basically insane, and uh, he doesn't think like anyone else. Thanks. It's called fucking, fucking shit nipples. Alright. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. Do you know who I am? Do you have any clue who I am at all? Do you have any idea what I've done to make you who you are? Yeah, you better think a little bit about that, you little son of a bitch. Give me your kiss. Daddy loves you. Jason's one of the most talented creative individuals I've ever met and worked with. It's incredible, the shit he does in guitar. He can hold the guitar up and like hit any note on the fretboard. And as he's hitting it, he can like say the note before he hits it. I can't do it right now. Do it, we're doing great. Jason Sukoff has been a very big influence on me. Like that dude brought something out of me that I I, I didn't think I'd have. You know, like he brought more soul to me. Is that too much? I thought you had some good ideas, man. I, I just want to make sure. I it's think not towards like... the end of it, you should start repeating it a little more. For a few things that were like, you know, parts that Jason kind of came up with, which was like, fuck, I don't care. I think it's great. I'd rather have somebody come up with something that like helps the song than me to just sit there and just play the part. Having him there, it's like been awesome. Like him working with me like that, you know? What's the note? <laughs> this one? No, it's not about nothing, dude. Just figure it out. No, it's in here. I love watching this because you guys are at the same level right now. You know what I mean? Usually Jim's standing up and just like, whatever, fuck you. But right now you guys are like two guys in wheelchairs facing each other. We're like two yeah, cripples and a like, fucking cripple. Hey, so anyways, uh, I got this shit going on. <laughs> oh, with his leg. I'm trying to imitate his leg. Yeah. <laughs> you can't imitate this. <laughs> What's uh, the coolest position you can put your leg in? Next part, this next part with your with your leg in the coolest way ever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I can do this. His personality, it's so close to mine, you can't, like, it collides, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you can't, it's like a magnet, you know, once you get into this area, it's like, it just moves around, it doesn't, it doesn't connect, you know? I don't know if that was in time. Is, is it? I, I can't really see you. Jim, are you gonna be able to play that? Um, it's just three, it's like, yeah. if you're not even playing it that great, well, I don't know that Jim's gonna play it that great. Jim, I, do you even, can you finger tap? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, if, if I was, if, if, if I was shown the part, yeah, I could do it. You know, I'm not, I'm not a dude that can write metal songs. I'm not, I, I just can't write good metal songs. I'm sure if I practice for like, you know, a few ten years or something like that, I'm sure I could figure it out. But other than that, like, I'm, I'm more entertained by like writing beats and stuff like that. Cause it's like, I've been listening to rap for so long and playing video games for so long and they use a lot of that stuff combines together, you know, like a lot of that stuff's together, so. Notes don't matter, dude. Who cares? Who cares? I, I swear to God, I must be fucking one of the best looking guys in this fucking metal shit, dude. Fuck all you other fucking ugly faggots. I'm good looking. It is kind of hard being Jim Mark in this band. I carry a lot of weight in the band, you know what I mean? Let me just tell you this much. I'd rather play video games than hang out with some dumb broad, okay? Video games are way better. I'm just nervous about World War III. It's gonna happen soon. If you're not having fun doing this stuff, then why do you do it? They don't call me low end 
for nothing. Actually, nobody calls me low end, but that's just great though because you know why? I like to give myself nicknames, you know? Like, I'm just a loser. <laughs> I'm not sure, but back in February we had at least a month off, maybe two, where I, I went out and I just bought Pro Tools. Rob did the same thing and Mark already had it. So we just started doing our own demos separate from each other. And we've never really done that. Usually we just have some riffs or a full song come to the table, you know, come to the rehearsal spot and just do it. But for some reason, just ideas are flowing out of my head. Like I think I've written a lot more on this record, definitely, than the last two. I think this record definitely tops anything we've ever done, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. Luckily, I ship my uh, mountain bike down here, um, just so I have something to do when I'm bored, which is today. I think this record's been like the most fun we've ever had, I think, writing and recording, just because, you know, everyone's been revived, like everyone's happier, you can tell everyone's mood is different, you know, it's like, obviously getting Andals back in the band is just like a breath of fresh air to everybody. And we proved that, the last record was a great record, but I don't think it was 100% Chimera, you know, I was missing something. With this record, I, th I think it's our most brutal record, I think it, it combines the best of the last record and the record before. Um, and possibility is more brutal in your face, like just action-packed, I think. But at the same time, it also shows the maturity of the last record. Matt has contributed quite a bit. I mean, on Impossibility and, and on the self-titled, he had only contributed a few riffs here and there and maybe a song per record and this one he is, he's been just as uh, uh, much of a writer as myself or Rob. Okay, for those who don't know, we, we just put three more X's up on the board. Not because we recorded solos, which is what the S stands for, but because there are no solos in them. So we really got nothing done. <laughs> We've still got only one song done so far and it's day, day 15. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Who drew that one? <laughs> Man! That was good. No? That little tiny sound, can you just get rid of it or no? Yeah. It was better than the other one. Okay, well yeah. It was better. So I just like, well, yeah. Maybe I should put some gay fucking pink spongies in my guitar and make it look... I hate recording because it's tedious. I just want to grab like a remote from that, you know, that that movie that Adam Sandler's in, just fast forward to touring, you know, it's fucking be on stage instead of being in the practice studio. Like, all right, how's this riff go? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Did you see the light on that thing, dude? It just was like weird. Yeah, definitely the the last album. You know, it was the majority of it was written by Rob, and you know he would uh, write the songs at home, bring them in, and they were pretty much finished songs. Whatever, Rob. Oh fuck you, dude! I just do solos all day. This time, you know, once we started getting together and working on things, the songs just came out uh, so much better than the stuff we were doing on our own. Yeah, a little more pre -roll. Yeah, so I can, like, get into it. solos, I'm working on solos.
feel like about 60% done with them, and I should be like 100% done with them, and and I should be done writing them all and practicing them all. But uh, since I'm still in the writing phase, my practicing is lacking on the ones that I should that I already have written, and uh, so I just feel like I'm trying to rush. And uh, I think they're coming to me slowly but surely. <laughs> solos they'll like they're not really like super shred but every once in a while he'll pull like this little shreddy thing on you be like well i didn't know rob was gonna do that that's unbelievable and that's what i like about rob because he he makes you think that he's not like fucking shreddy mcfun tits but he's actually like he's like secret shredder for fucking 50 seconds an album and that's it's really enough to fucking give you something here and there that makes you want to listen to that song again that's what i truly believe but all they're doing is just shred. That's gonna be I'm awesome. not just shredding. No, Japanese people. quoting the DVD. I know, I know, but I don't feel like I'm just shredding. No, I'm quoting that you're part of the DVD. I know, and I, I, th I thought you were quoting that to contradict, like... No, 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 I'm not, I'm just quoting it. Oh, okay. Rob's one of those quick wit guys. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, I got, I got pissed about that on the last record because these dudes are like... On the message boards, or whatever, like, what did Rob say? That he's not just gonna start shredding and stuff like that. There's no shredding on the self title. That's all. Message like, boards, kids, just shut the fuck up. They yeah. don't know what they're talking. To about. me, shredding is all all the fucking time. Like, I can't even do that. So, like, well, this is a little bit of shredding though. For the plane. That's my first shred. There you go. Rob's first shred. Rob's first shred. Rob's first shred. <laughs> Should make like a fucking so jingle. He's so damn fat. 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 Hey, hey. I'm all about, I'm all about groove. I'm all about different types of groove too. My favorite is like the, you know, we're just like. Like, uh, let's say, like the flame, you know. You know, just that. You know, stuff like that. So I'm just all about that. When there's a riff that you just know feels real good, and I love, I love when Matt will be like, that's a fun riff to play, or something like that. I'm like, yeah, fun, that's, yeah, I think so too. You know, and you play it, and it's like, it just feels good to play, and stuff like that. And that's where a lot of disagreements come in, too. Until hearing the finished pro product, it's really hard for multiple people to agree on how to get there. Because everybody sees a different path. Especially because the path isn't tangible in any way. You can't even see it or anything like that. But it's something you're thinking of and you have to try to translate the four or five other people. You know, and make happen. No, you need to play it this way and you need to play it this way so that it sounds like this. If you don't do it like that, we're not going to be able to achieve this sound that I'm thinking of so that you guys can see what I'm trying to do. You know, that's what has to happen with, with you know, drums, guitars, bass, and, and whatever. Is that what you're doing? Bum, bum. No, we purposely did that. This is the part. It'd be that note. The octave of that note. I just add mute that three. But I'm going to experiment with that a little bit and make it sound good, like, with, with everything, you know? Yeah, on this. The whole big web just keeps happening, you know? But then finally, just after a grueling process, everything comes together. And that's it. Dude, that's on the one, the farthest one, dude. <gasps>
Dude, get him off of there, dude. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> dude, dude. What? You should lift up the controller and take it over. I ain't lifting it up. Someone else do it, dude. If you want to play video games. Dude, it's going to jump off of there, Rob. Dump it in the toilet, dude. That's what I'm going to do. Dude, hurry, go. Oh, that's fucking nasty, dude. This hotel is fucking shitty. Yeah, this is the second one. Both times we've been in here with Jim, there's there's been a, uh, a cockroach in the room. Dude, dude! <laughs> Late, late. And wipe the eggs off that thing, because it probably laid eggs on there. That's how they do it. song on this record I try to listen to it and just um, get a vibe or uh, vision or just a mindset and put myself in that place and then uh, just go from there and just toy around and I don't really get involved with anything until the songs are complete I just prefer that because they're constantly changing their fucking minds about this and that and parts and riffs and what's the point of trying to keep up with that because I'll start writing stuff and then they'll get rid of the song it's, to me it's just wasting my time I live in Tampa, Florida, and, and these guys are in Cleveland, and we're making a record. You know, they're sending me songs. I'm doing my stuff, sending it back through email. They're listening to it. They're like, oh, why don't you try this? And I take it back, and I change this, and then send it back. And it's, and we don't live anywhere near each other, and it's pretty crazy to think that, you know, this could happen. And uh, this wouldn't have happened 30 years ago. Like, seriously, it's the best shit you've done, dude, by far. If I ask more. No. Dude, fuck it. You know why? Listen, can I explain to you why I kiss your ass? Because you want hugs. No, it's not even that because I need to learn how to use Macintosh computers soon. <laughs> so we're going to be on tour. So anything, I like, I, I need you to set me up an Xbox Live account. There's shit that I can't, my brother can't do. I charge 15 an hour. That's, it's wor dude, for you, it's worth it, dude. <laughs> I'm the uh, official go-to guy. For anyone with any sort of computer problem, iPod problem, anything annoying, I get about 30 fucking calls a week and it's the most annoying thing ever. And I should set up a 1-800 hotline and it sucks being a nerd. You're like, yeah, 1-900, well, you, everyone charge, you charge for that shit. Yeah, I, I'm exploited to full extent, I hate it, but whatever, I'm here to help people. So, no, no, reason to live. In the past, Mark's done all the singing, and, and I've done nothing. You know, he, he's basically doing all the singing on his own, and we have harmonies that need to be done live. So, you know, it's my job to back him up. No! There you go. Right. Hold it out longer, though. No, it's not too loud. No, 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 it's not too loud. Oh, I don't have myself in here at all either. Yeah, hold on. I, I know you probably couldn't hear yourself either, right? Oh, that's just too fucking bad, buddy. Cause where I come from, we piss. Alright, let's do it one more time, you ready? Yeah. Fuck you. No, it's not too loud. Voice sounds good with your voice. Mm-hmm. Alright, you're done. Oh cool. Good. I don't go shower and clean my dick. No, 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 no. Fix you got more up. stuff to do, dude. Yeah, like what? Stay here, dude. You get that? Shot. Fucking Chris, dude. Chris fucking hates me. Janitor, 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 But that's okay, dude. Because Chris, he makes the fucking album, so. I've been pleasantly surprised. I'm liking everything. Everything he's doing, I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. You know, I never really thought of that. There you go. 
hits certain notes, he's doing certain noises. I think Sukov's been a big inspiration for him on the record too, because, you know, Sukov just hears something and knows how to reproduce it. The way he thinks up the stuff is insane, and he could just listen to something. He just pops up the plug-in and then starts hitting shit on the keys, and it's perfect. Where do you go from there, you know? It's pretty cute. I was gonna put like the gayest, like I found this loop, it was like the gayest, technoest, gayest thing possible. Like, I was gonna put over like a, a super heavy part. It would've made it like, it would've made it like Madonna shit. That'd have been sweet. All right, quit playing. Yeah, once in a while, you know, people don't see my vision. That particularly happened with Empire. I mean, he was having a really hard time finding something for the intro, and um, I suggested bringing in Morgoth from, actually Morgoth, we got to say his full name, Morgoth the Impaler from the Enchanted Forest of the Netherlands. What's up? I don't know what you're trying to do with that part, but it's just not working. I, I don't know, man. It's, I'm at the end with this. It's, it's, it's like a real difficult part, and I, just, I can't figure out how to make it epic, and I don't really know where to go with this thing. Well, I mean, we had this talk a couple weeks ago, and I told you to try to get out of your element. I think you're a little too out of your element. You, like, totally blew me away with the rest of the stuff you've been doing, and this is, like, this is the last track on the album. It's got to be the best thing. And if you're seriously that frustrated with it, then we just need to do something else. And I just think that we should uh, call Morgoth uh, from uh, the Netherlands. I don't know what you think about that. Right, fuck, whatever it takes to get this part done. I mean, it'd be cool because, you know, you just have a guest appearance on the song and you know how fucking fast he is with this stuff. And yeah. we'll just fly him in and he can do it. He's a wizard. He is. Morgoth is like basically a wizard, man. He just brings that dark, evil vibe from Norway. You know, there's a lot of black metal up there and he just nails it. If a song is extreme enough for his tastes, then he can come in and just lay it down right away, not even hear the song. He can just lay his finger on that keyboard and it just makes the most intense sounds you've ever heard in your life. It's, it's incredible. It's all the smoke in here. Dude, this part needs Morgoth. Where is he? He's supposed to be here any minute now, I guess. I would, I'm not sure yet, though. I haven't seen him. Probably kind of disconcerting for Chris that you know that we didn't trust him enough to come up with his own part, but it was cool at the same time that he was willing to have Morgoth come in and, and lay down probably the sickest samples of the whole record. That was fucking awesome. Dude. I think we got our part. That was yeah. incredible. Yeah. Fucking A, that was amazing. Holy shit, Spakuza is gonna fucking die when he hears that. That's exactly the thing he was looking for. Who the hell is Spakuza? It's, it's incredible. Everything he did, I was like, mm, perfect. It's exactly what I envisioned, and it was just a really, uh, unique experience and I think it, it was really good for Morgoth to play with us and just finally get a chance to lay that down you know he's a 
He's intense, man. No, dude, I don't really like this band. I think I'm just gonna quit. You know, let's just start. You know what we should start? Pizza shop. No, we should start like we should be personal trainers for like the Brown players or like football players, I mean, basketball if I, players. If I was like a sports person, I would definitely take your advice. <laughs> They're great. This is close to getting me a hug. <laughs> left and four songs to write so it's basically I have like this impending doom and pressure this is always the last stage the guns to my head I usually listen to the music of the song for for a bit of time before I, I can write to it because I need to have some sort of emotion come from it it's really interesting because sometimes I scare myself on like man did I just really think about like that <laughs> like why why are my lyrics going this route? You know, um, for example, on this new album, The Flame, you know, musically by itself, it's just a bad, you could go, it's a badass route, it's heavy, but I went somewhere completely fucked up with it. You know, I, like, without saying too much about what it's about, um, it's just about one of the worst possible things that could ever happen to a woman. And that's what I thought of. And I was like, holy shit. Why am I thinking about this? And that's just what it, that's just the emotions I had. So I had to, I had to write about it. It's not something like I'm, I'm you know, I'm not, I'm not for, for it, but I had to write about it. So I don't know why, that just, that's just what popped into my head. So that, that's the sign, you know, that's like, that's what you have to do. It sucks, you know, it's really frustrating when you have something in your head and you think that it needs to like come out that way, you know, and you just, you hear it and then you go to try to do it and it just doesn't work and it's just the fucking pain in the ass, puts you in the worst mood ever. <laughs> What? We're not gonna keep that. You wanna have Jim do this? Yeah. Resurrection. I like the idea. Ah 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 ah. So I try to sing about things that are personal to me or interesting to me, yet leave them open enough that, you know, if you're sitting there listening to them, maybe you can have your own uh, feelings about them. So that's always difficult, like, who am I singing for besides myself, you know? I never know. And it gets really frightening sometimes because, you know, I might be singing something and I'm like, man, this is really cool. But can I picture that dude in the back of the audience 
with a Slayer shirt on holding a beer. Like, does he really give a fuck what I'm talking about? Yeah! I'll write something. And I fucking love it. And I'm like, oh man, this is just badass. And I play for the other guys, and their faces are like, hmm, that's pretty cool. That happened with Resurrection, like, nobody liked it. <laughs> Alright, let's go again. That almost made me come. This record's gonna take off, dude. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Especially with, line, with lines like that, there's no way you can't, dude. I mean, it's like. You just jinxed it. No. I wanted to write about. Um. I guess our past and as a band and I wouldn't necessarily say triumphing over um, all the bad things but in a way it is that way because we're still here even though we've had a lot of shit uh, thrown our way we've had a lot of terrible things happen to us you know we went through the whole drummer thing which everyone you know might know about No, I mean like. No, because it will go off the. Uh, Rip. Our label at the time not wanting to promote us. After an album, we basically almost killed each other and killed ourselves over writing, and then not to promote it one bit. You know that was really disconcerting. So I had to write about it. You know I felt like I need to get this off my chest and I think a lot of people that'll read it will just say oh man it's just they're dogging their old label it's not that it's a lot more to it and the fact that we were so miserable at the end of the last album's touring cycle I wanted to leave Chris wanted to leave the band and it was just like man we got to do something about this you know we were like falling apart wait we're not going to balance wait <laughs> They're supposed to go to McDonald's and then Fridays. I'm not, I'm not signing it. Okay. They didn't capitalize the V in Greece, so. Oh, uh, really? I'm not on that label. I don't. I always liked the band, and I, I've, I've, you know, listened to pretty much you know everything they've done, and I, I've liked the direction that they've been going, where it's gotten uh, heavier and definitely more metal. I mean, truth be told, we, we had every interest in signing the band well before we heard anything from Resurrection. I mean, the deal was on the table, and we'd already been talking to the guys, and, you know, before we heard anything. We wanted to work with Chimera, and that means whatever record they make next, and that was Resurrection. So, so far, what I've heard is pretty fucking awesome, so it worked out nice. It's good to know, like, the owner of both Ferret and Nuclear Blast really love the band and uh, are really behind them. So, I, you know, just... It's just great for us, you know. But finally now, you know, the hard work has totally paid off where a label's like, we want to get behind you, we love your product, we know it's going to make us money, here's a little money to get started, have fun. You know, and so everybody's just waiting. It could be a week from now, it could be five weeks, but at some point everybody's going to get a nice big check and everybody's real excited about that and it's finally like, all right. <sighs> That's how I feel at least, you know. I still have so many goals to meet. I still feel that we're so far away from where we all want to be. And like I said, where is that? Who knows? But, you know, we still have so much fight in us and we want to keep going. Nobody in this world will ever stop us. Nobody in this world can even touch us.
all of us have definitely seen our fair share of uh, ups and downs and sacrifices. And I would say the number one question I'm asked is, you know, well, what does it take to be in a band? Or, you know, some of my guys are lazy, something like that. You have to be willing to give up every single thing you've ever known and every single thing in your life that matters to you and you basically give it up and all of us have, have done that and then some. excited about this record. I'm usually kind of negative just because that's how I am. But this time I've been excited like before we even got in the studio and that never happens. Ever. Whether it's how brutal or you know, intense the riffs are or, or the vocals, I think all around, all six of us are just, this record is the record we've always wanted to make. And I'll probably say that for every record we ever make. <laughs> Which is a good thing. at a point where, you know, this is a, a fresh new start for us. We have Andal's back, we have a whole new game plan, and we have a fucking killer record. finished recording these songs and the more and more we get done with them, the more and more I can't wait to get that CD cover. Can't wait to go and buy it myself and say, fuck yeah, this is the shit, you know, like this is what we fucking do. Buy this fucking record, okay, you're gonna love every fucking minute of it and if you don't, fuck off, we don't care. This is definitely the happiest I've been being in a band. It's, I just feel like we're starting over. I love this fucking album and I want to write another one right now. You know, like I'm just so inspired to like keep going with it, but you guys are gonna have to wait for that one. Oh
opens his mouth, he starts to eat everything. Eat everything. Especially meat. He eats everything. And he drops like the jerk. Did I forget anyone? <laughs> <laughs>